Hey y'all, welcome back to the tutorial. This is part two of the series on optimizing pipeline performance with partitioning and upsurge. In this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you the Java CLI code for going about creating an upsurge enabled data set based off of a data set that already exists in Domo. Let's get to it. Um, first things first, you're going to need the Java CLI. If you don't have the Java CLI installed, go under admin, sorry, installed, downloaded, go under admin, go to tools and downloads and find the Domo CLI. You'll download a .jar file, which you'll then want to copy into a folder that you can access later. As part of this process, you're gonna go under security and you need to generate a new access token. This access token will allow the Java CLI to connect to your instance of Domo and do stuff with the credentials that the user for whom the Java CLI is created has. So don't do something foolish like, I don't know, uh, put in clear text on the internet your access token. If you were just going to create a new data set in Domo via the Java CLI, the process you'd go through is you would say, okay, define the schema. What are the rows and columns of my data set and the column type? Then you would say, okay, I need to alter this schema for this upsert scheme, if applicable. Then you would upload new data into Domo into that scheme, schema that you've previously defined. Now for this tutorial, again, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna take a data set that already exists, exists in Domo that was output by a MySQL data file. And my goal is to move data from that MySQL data set into an upsert enabled data set. And you might be wondering, Jay, why would you go through all this hassle? One, it makes it easier for the demo to just have data that I can pull out of Domo. But two, and this is actually the use case that we're gonna go, that I'm gonna build out in a later video. Um, I've got data coming in from a YouTube report. And it has, you know, the stats about my YouTube video, which is kind of cool. But I have no guarantees on the upsert key column. And that has me a little bit worried. Because if you enable upsert on a data set, but do not have a properly unique key column, you can break the data set to the point that support, Domo support have to fix the data set for you. So let's just avoid that possibility by creating an output data set that groups my data by video ID and therefore guarantees the uniqueness of my data set. In my ETL, I'm choosing to limit my output to 50 rows because I want to be able to demonstrate the upset. All right. What I'm interested in getting right now is the, the data set ID for my test upsert data set. All right. I'll call this my SQL so we can keep track of this. So again, we said my uh, first activity was going to be to get the schema of an existing data set. If you've never used the Java CLI before, you're going to go to the folder where the Java CLI is. Um, save, and you're going to type java-jar, domo util.jar. Um, once you've launched the Java CLI, people always ask, hey, Jay, where's the documentation? There is no documentation. That's a lie. You can find the documentation by typing in help into the Java CLI, and it will give you a list of all of the commands that are available. And if you type help and then the name of a command, it will tell you the parameters that you can pass. So in our case, we want to get the schema of an existing data set and save it to a file. So I'll type get schema. Have I connected yet? I don't think I connected. Step one, you have to connect to your instance of Domo. And that's with the connect command. Notice I've got the activation token here that I've copied, that I copied from um, the admin section earlier. All right, now we can get schema get schema dash i. Um, this is the data set ID that I want to run. And I'm going to save it to a file called temp underscore schema. 
the JSON. So I did my get schema. Um, if I look at that schema file, um, here it is, and I can see, okay, the type of file is a video ID, it's a string, and oh, interesting, the upsert key is set to false. For the MySQL data set, that is true. However, in the new data set we create, we want that upsert key to ultimately be true. All right. So let's see, what are my steps? I have, uh, I've gotten my schema, but now I need to define a new data set. So again, I'm going to use uh, help create data set. All right, these are the parameters that I can pass. I can pass the name of a data set, dash s is for the schema file and the type. So I'm gonna create a data set and I will call it upsert enabled ds. I need to pass the dash n flag for name. And I need to pass the name of the file, sorry, the schema file as a dash s parameter. So that's temp underscore schema.json. And for the dash t argument, that's the data set type, I'll call it API. The dash t argument functionally doesn't really do much, but it does change the icon in um, the data center so that you can tell it's a CSV or an XLSX or whatever. And then it failed. Why? Ah, create data. Schema file not found. Ah, because it's an underscore, not a hyphen. Again, copy and paste in case you have to recreate this later. So it says post and it says it's a success and this is the name of the new data set ID. So here's my upsert enabled data set. You can see it has zero rows in it. It's got no data, but if I look at the schema tag, it still has no data. Oh, not quite what I was expecting. So let's do this. Let's get schema of that data set I just created. So get schema dash i and okay. So that's the schema file. And I can see it's got a column of video ID of type string, da 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 da, upsert key is false. So we're at this stage. I've defined the schema of my new data set. It just doesn't have any data in it. So the Domo UI is being a little bit weird saying it has no columns, but that's fine. We now want to alter the schema to add my upsert key column. So I could um, download the schema and change this upsert key to true and all of that shenanigans. But what I like about the Java CLI is this oh so helpful. There is a command called define upsert, I believe. Yeah, define upsert. So let's look at define. So it says I need to just give it the data set ID and put in the columns that I want to define my upsert key column on. So define upsert dash I, that data set using the column video ID. All right, there should be no data in that data set or anything interesting like that, but hopefully I've successfully defined my upsert key column. And again, we're going to copy and paste the commands that we ran. He says for his own benefit. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another get schema, but this time on my new data set. Um, and I'll save it to dash file temp schema. Get schema. Move to extra space. Okay. All right. Let's reopen my temp schema file. All right, format. Let's take a look. Notice that for video ID, it now says the upsert key is set to true. And um, down at the bottom, it has the identity is set to video ID. Cool, so now I've got my file. Now what I want to do is I wanna take the data from MySQL and move it into my, um, upsert enabled data set. 
let's see if there's a command that will help me move data. And I believe there's a command called, in fact, ah, move data. So help move data. So source, destination, and dash A to a pen. Uh, small, small print that you may not know. In order to do upsert, you must use a pen. Because if you did a replace, it would just replace all of your data instead of append new data. So it might sound like a duh statement, but it's something that tripped me up. Make sure to use the dash A flag. All right, so what do I want to move? I want to move data from my MySQL data set. I, my MySQL data set, so dash source to the destination of certain enabled data set. And I want to pass dash A for append. So now, theoretically, if I refresh my page, I should see some data. And it tells me I have 50 rows of data. That's good. Now, sometimes I don't chart, sometimes I don't trust the Domo UI, but I always trust my cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a row count. of the data in my upsert enabled data set. And it should tell me that I've got 50 rows. Fantastic. Now, this is the moment of truth. I'm going to go back into my MySQL data flow. And this is why I did it as a data flow, guys, in case you're wondering. I'm going to change my limit from 50 to 75. And now, once that data flow finishes running, I'm going to run my move command again. Now, given that it's doing an append, if upsert did not work, I should have 125 rows. If upsert does work, I should only have 75 rows because that limit's in place. If you watched my previous video, you'll appreciate what I was talking about when I said the longest part of your ETL is not the ETL itself, rather the 28 seconds for data transfer into the system. It took zero seconds, or rather it took two seconds to run my um, group by clause, but it took 28 seconds to get the data into Magic MySQL. And that's, again, why recursive data flows aren't done. It's also why Magic ETL is better than MySQL. We're not getting controversial just yet. All right. <laughs> so now I should be able to run my move data command, should move my 75 rows and append it onto my upsert enabled data set. But it won't append and make 125 rows. It will remove the duplicate. So if I did my job right, if I refresh my card here, I should go from 50 to 75 rows. Fantastic. Now is where it's going to get really interesting, though, because I'm going to edit this data flow and set the limit to two rows. With a limit of two rows, remember, it's upsert enabled. So my input is going to go from 75 rows down to two rows, and it's, only, it's going to only update those values. And so my output data set should still be 75. If it was doing a replace, please don't do a replace. If it was doing a replace, I haven't tested this, we would go down to two rows. This will be the ultimate task to make sure upsert is working the way I want it to. All right, guys, here we go. Please work, please work, please work. I want 75 rows. 75 rows. It worked. It did not go down to two. It did not increase to 77. So upsert is working the way I want. Some final thoughts. So you might be thinking, Jay, this is a really long and roundabout way of getting upsert on a data set. Why don't you just go to your MySQL data flow here 
and then just enable upsert on that data. I tried, good idea, I tried. But what happens is, is when you run an ETL, Domo will potentially restate the output data set. So it will recreate. Remember when I did create data set and I defined the schema? It will do that again, which will remove the fact that I manually enabled upsert. In other words, it would just break. Wouldn't do what you want it to do. And so then you might say, well, Jay, instead of trying to put upsert on the output data set from an ETL, why don't you do it at the root? Why don't you apply upsert as the data is being ingested into Domo? And you're absolutely right. That's 100% the right thing to do. Remember in my tutorial, I said that as you pull data into Vault, the standard methods are append and replace. And Domo has some new methods for getting data into Domo that you can apply. So partition and upsert. Problem or the challenge is that when you think about creating a new connector in Domo, not all of your connectors have upsert enabled. So Redshift has upsert enabled. Apparently Zendesk support, that's funny. Zendesk support has an upsert enabled connector. So does Salesforce and HubSpot. Um, Domo does have a couple other web based connectors that support upsert. Um, so if there's a specific one you're looking for, ask your CSM about it. Now that said, YouTube, Google Analytics, and possibly Facebook, um, they have some other tools for um, handling uh, data updates. So they'll use, um, they're more likely to use the partition scheme and have that built into the connector. If you are looking to get um, upsert or partitioning implemented in your environment, sometimes it can be as simple as asking your CSM or account executive, hey, is there a connector for XYZ SAS system that supports upsert? That's an easy question. But if you have a longer, more complex question about optimizing your pipeline performance, you can always reach out to me. My name's Jay Wilson. I'm a freelance consultant through my company, Onyx Reporting. Um, I'm here to provide training content for people like you and or consult companies on their implementation, rollout and adoption and governance problems. I hope to talk to you guys soon. We'll catch you later, okay?